It's been on my mind for a long while now that I should start reviewing the films of Alfred Hitchcock. I've been a fan of his forever, so it's not like I'm discovering him for the first time, but the problem that I ran into was this. Which movie should I start with? One of my favorites? Well, those would be something like Shadow of a Doubt or The Birds. But very quickly I realized that those movies, like many of his all-time classics, have already been analyzed and examined from every possible angle. So I was stuck for quite a while, until not so long ago, as I was working my way through the Masterpiece Collection on Blu-ray, when I stumbled across The Trouble with Harry. I wasn't particularly looking forward to it. I remembered seeing it once as a kid and not getting much out of it. Literally the only thing I remembered was an image in my mind of a foot sticking out of a bathtub. Beyond that, it didn't resonate the way The Man Who Knew Too Much or Rear Window did to me as a kid. And boy was I surprised. The Trouble with Harry is a cleverly written, often hilarious film that was overlooked upon its release in 1955 and hasn't really gotten the attention it deserves since. It was adapted from a novel by Jack Trevor Story, which I've not read, but the premise seems to have been this. What if some people happened across a dead body, but none of them acted as though it were a dead body? That idea alone is interesting, but you pair that with a tight little cast of disparate actors, a script by John Michael Hayes right in the middle of his run of Hitchcock classics, a Bernard Herrmann score, and the stunning Vermont locations, and you've got a classic black comedy on your hands. The first thing that strikes you in this film, after the opening credits, are those leisurely shots of the Vermont countryside. And they are breathtaking. Shot in the fall, with the trees popping off the screen in various autumn colors, the movie's beautiful, and the transitions between soundstage work and actual location shooting is pretty seamless. Knowing Hitchcock's love of not straying from the studio too often, there is a surprising amount of on-location footage, and the movie is all the better for it. Seriously, if you've never seen this film on Blu-ray, do yourself a favor. It's gorgeous. The first character we meet is played by Jerry Mathers, two years before he began his role in Leave it to Beaver. He's fantastic in the movie, as this little boy with a love of making trades, getting a lot more mileage out of a dead rabbit than you'd expect, and also perpetually confused about how time works. He's the first hint we get that people in this universe aren't as startled by the presence of a corpse as you'd expect they should be. But after that, we meet the rest of our characters in short order. The movie rests upon four people. Captain Wiles, as played by Edmund Gwen, Sam Marlowe, played by John Forsyth, Mildred Natwick's Miss Gravely, with an appropriately grim surname, and Shirley MacLaine in her film debut as Jennifer Rogers. Each character is played impeccably. Captain Wiles is the kindly but world-weary man of the sea who initially believes himself to be the killer of poor Harry. Marlowe is a carefree artist who doesn't take anything, let alone a little matter like death, too seriously. Miss Gravely is the lonely spinster who's far more concerned about setting up a date with Captain Wiles than she is about the body at her feet, and Mrs. Rogers is just as pleased as punch to see the mysterious Harry has gone to his eternal rest. The fun of the movie is that it's both a mystery, as we and all of the characters don't have the slightest idea about who actually did Harry in, and a sly little comedy, as these characters take it upon themselves to dispose of the body so as not to get themselves or anyone else in trouble. And it's also the story of two budding romances, all rapidly progressing in the span of one day. A note on that, the movie achieves the effect of showing one day passing really effectively. The early scenes would definitely be easier, but as it passes to evening, and eventually night, we see the yellow glow of sunset shining through the windows, and eventually the gloom of dusk, as our quartet of characters trudge back and forth, shovels in hand. There's enough grave digging in this movie to even make the audience feel as though they did some of the work. A great deal of the movie ends up pairing Edmund Gwen and John Forsythe together, as they talk around their attractions to the leading ladies of the film. Edmund Gwen and John Forsythe wouldn't at first seem as though they would make a great screen team, but they really do. And I love how there doesn't even seem to be an acknowledgement of their vast age difference or different lifestyles. They're just two pals chatting nonchalantly while digging a grave, while the future occupant lies beside them. Mildred Natwick is deceptively meek for much of the movie, but as she gets more involved in what has transpired, she too is able to utilize her comedic timing very well. And Shirley MacLaine plays this young widow and mother in such an interesting way, and never the way you'd expect. She'll be telling a story about her life, and every sentence is just a little off-kilter or 
delivered in an absent-minded manner. She's so much fun to watch. She definitely falls outside the realm of the typical Hitchcock blonde that everyone likes to analyze to death, and that also contributes to her feeling unique. The script is just delightful, which probably sounds pretentious, but it really is. There aren't really a lot of terribly quotable lines, but it's always very witty, characters say things that you'd really not expect them to say, and the dialogue just sets this tone that you can't help but revel in. The score by Bernard Herrmann was his first collaboration with Alfred Hitchcock, and it's also just so fun and light, while still containing some darker hints that his future scores would definitely dive into much more. The opening title track is great, and is filled with little nods towards the themes that are established throughout the movie. The sudden notes of surprise that ring out whenever we revisit Harry's body, the bouncy melodies that accompany the characters as they walk through the woods, it's all sampled for us during the opening credits, previewing what's to come. Hitchcock apparently even said that this was his favorite of Herman's scores for him. The cinematography is beautiful, as I've already said, but if there's one image that is the iconic one to take out of the movie, it's the repeated usage of Harry's feet filling the screen. The first time we see it is the best, with little Arnie Rogers' head poking above them, looking at the body, but it continues to happen, some with shoes, some without. After a certain point, these shots aren't as feasible, though, as Harry is buried and then exhumed several times. Now, of course, everyone knows that Alfred Hitchcock always gave himself a little cameo in every film, and I'll admit that this is one that I missed upon first viewing. It's a blink-and-you'll-miss-it shot, which, in my defense, is very easy to do, through a window as Hitchcock walks along a country road. He was always very good at knowing when he could get away with his cameo and how he could insert it without disturbing the movie otherwise. Like in Psycho, putting it early enough that it won't take the audience out of the movie after the story takes a hard left turn from what we all thought we were watching initially. And here, with the cast so small and the story so focused upon them, there aren't exactly bustling street scenes for him to wander through. So, if you're looking for an offbeat Alfred Hitchcock film or just an interesting comedy, the trouble with Harry isn't any trouble at all. This isn't something I say often, but by the closing minutes, I really didn't want it to end. Not that I'm typically wishing for a movie to be over and done with, but this was a rare occasion where I actually wasn't ready to say goodbye to these characters yet. So if the goal was to leave me wanting more, well, Mr. Hitchcock, you certainly succeeded. Highly recommended. Thanks so much for watching. Adios for now.